My number one goal is to have the best quality of life that I can have for whatever time remaining that I have. Hello and welcome to Cancer Friends. Andrew Shore here in San Diego and living with myelofibrosis and CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Joining us on this program is someone else who's living with myelofibrosis and CLL, and that's Jeremy Smith, who's in West Lynn, Oregon, right near Portland. Jeremy, thanks for being with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, thanks for inviting me on. It's, um, it's been quite a journey for me over the years. Well, thank you for sharing some time with us. As you said, it's been a long journey. So Jeremy, you've been living with an MPN starting with TV for 33 years. Your treatment now is with an interferon and you have your highs and lows, but you're doing okay. And you're a big believer in diet and exercise. And I think all of us want to know what can we do to strengthen ourselves for a high, higher quality of life. So talk about that a little bit about what you do and what you talk to others about related to diet and exercise and that being part of your role as a patient. Yeah. So when I was first diagnosed, um, I had, I, I never heard of the disease. I, you know, was scared. Um, but as I started doing research, um, I found at the time, this was 1989, um, there wasn't a lot of access to information specifically on exercise and diet for MPN patients at all on the web um, at that time. There weren't any studies. There was no fatigue study that was done later with Dr. Messa. Um, and so um, what I started doing was reading uh, other going to other cancer forums and finding out what were these cancer patients doing um, with really bad cancers that was different um, than what we were doing as MPN patients. And the constant theme that came through from everything I read was diet and exercise. And so at the time when I had polycythemia, I said, well, you know, I got this thick blood. What, what can I do to help my body recover and fight this disease? And so um, I came up with a whole business plan that I wrote that um, we're gonna be these things I was gonna do. So for diet, the first thing I started doing was consuming large quantities of garlic because it, can thin, it has properties to thin the blood. Um, I, I, I didn't, I knew that I was getting fatigued and that exercise can thwart some of that and definitely depression. Everyone goes through a phase where there is some depression, some worse, some, you know, very mild, and then you also get fatigued. And so I felt that I really needed to change my program, lose weight, um, get in shape. And so I then brought exercise in where I'd go out on 30, 40, 50 mile bike rides. And, um, and now I did, I want, I want to say, first of all, that I didn't just do this all on my own. I sat down with my doctors because you should never start any changes to your diet or exercise without consulting with your doctor. So they know what's going on. Because one of the things I didn't know uh, until I spoke to my doctor is that he asked me to always let him know when we did CBCs um, if I had exercised before or a day before, because it will, in many cases, exercise increases um, your white cell counts. So um, uh, it, it's important to know that because my white cells might bump up and um, that's either a sign of an infection or it could be something else. And so um, I, you know, there were a couple of times where my white cells went way up and it was because I had been on a hundred mile bike ride the day before. So, 
so I, I combined all of those things and all of a sudden I could, I could, um, feel my body, like the fatigue was gone. Um, the, um, uh, and I was just feeling better. And I will say it's one of the things that I'm most proud about is that I've never missed a day of work in 34 years because of my MPN. And I've flown probably pretty much, I think I'm, I know I got the 1 million mile certificate, but I'm around 1.7 million miles on planes. Although once COVID hit, uh, my doctor said, you're not flying anymore. So, um, but but I, I was able also to, um, I paid for a lot of my own CBC testing so that I could see if I switch to this type of diet or I moderate this, what are the results that I'm getting? So um, I was able to track some of that stuff and share it with my doctor. Now, <clears throat> it's still unscientific. I'd go to him and he'd say, there's no data to support that. Because, you know, they, the way they look at data is very different than the way I do or you do. That was Jeremy, kind of let me ask you, you know, I'm sure our viewers are hanging on this and saying, okay, so what does Jeremy eat now? Well, I, I've always, I've had one rule, so I'm going to say this now, that um, one day a week I can eat anything I want, and that includes McDonald's. Um, I don't believe you should create a diet for yourself that makes you miserable because um, if you love food, you shouldn't start hating it. So um, I, I'm more, I would say, if I was going to make this easy to understand, I'm more on the Mediterranean diet than anything else because, you know, another lesson I learned along the way is that it may not be your disease that kills you. It may be something else. <laughs> because of the stress on the body and, and how the diseases morph. And I've had cardiovascular issues and things like that. So go, the Mayo Clinic, the head of cardiology there recommended the Mediterranean diet. And um, that's pretty much where I am today. It's, it's, it's a diet anybody can be on and um, get great benefits out of it. And it's not one of those diets where you have to just eat beans or, uh, you know, uh, all you, you know, it's, 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 it's a very good balance and it gives you the flexibility, but, you know, I, I, I still eat a Kit Kat bar. Um, you know, there's, there's certain things I'm not willing to, uh, eliminate and, um, uh, but the, the diet to me that I would go on if I was an MPM patient, and again, always check with your doctor, um, is more the Mediterranean diet or some variation of that. You and I both know uh, Dr. Angela Fleischman, who's a researcher and a clinician at uh, UC Irvine up the road from me. She is a big believer in the Mediterranean diet. And it's all connected in her mind, and some of the others say this too, that what we have is an inflammatory condition. Right. And that this diet can lower inflammation. So uh, again, check with your doctor, but uh, someone who is a very highly regarded MPN specialist, Dr. Fleischman, is doing a lot of research on this. So it's not just, uh, you know, conjecture. There's some thought about it, too. The um, There was a seminar back in May up at the Hutch with uh, a bunch of doctors that Dr. Scott led and um, Dr. Mesa was there, but there was an interesting doctor from Arizona who is focused on um, uh, nutrition and um, we're really starting to see things change. Yeah, so it, it's at this seminar, she was talking about the importance of diet and exercise, which you know, I used to go to Ash every once in a while and there wasn't, you know, early there on, there wasn't any real discussion of diet and exercise. Every once in a while, someone would talk about it for 15 minutes, but um, uh, it's really starting to change now. And they realize, I think doctors realize now that it has to be a comprehensive treatment and that food does heal the human body and the right foods as you said earlier 
are critical to reducing inflammation and inflammation drives almost every cancer or disease in the human body. And that's something I focused on as well as part of my diet and exercises to get my um, uh, inflammation down to as low as possible. And I've done a pretty good job with that, so. Well, we'll all, I think, uh, heed this. I know I'm working on my diet now. And I think we all wanna know what can we do on our end beyond the medications or shots we give us or whatever it is, uh, what can we do to put ourselves in the strong, strongest possible position? I, I also think, and we don't talk about this enough, is mental health awareness and treatment is very important. I saw a big shift in my attitude when I went to a, um, a therapist and um, we, I had a person that I could actually talk to about how I felt about possibly dying or my life being impacted. And I think everybody needs to have that option and consider it because I was driving my doctors nuts at, at one point because um, it was very hard to tell um, when I'd get sick, uh, was it related to my, my uh, polycythemia vera at the time or was it related to something else? And so, um, I needed um, to uh, calm down. And so my um, therapist got me to start meditating. And so um, those things are really helpful, but um, it's not just about diet and exercise, it's about healing the body overall. And so all of those things contribute to that and are very important aspects that I, all MPN and pa patients should explore. And I know today versus 1989, a lot more patients um, uh, uh, dabble in some sort of meditation and alternative um, treatments that um, they they take in um, you know consultation with their doctors because you have to be really careful in going off into the la la land of supplements, right? It Amen to all that. That's some great advice. So Jeremy, 33 years, many of the people you first met in the very earliest days of the internet are no longer with us. Thank God you are. Do you ever think, I don't know if you're religious or spiritual at all, you're, there's a reason. I mean, you're a voice now. You're a pioneer who's still with us that um, it gives you purpose? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that um, priorities shifted in my life. Um, I, I began to, it, now it didn't happen overnight. You know, it, it took me about 10 years to get into a, a state of mind where I was thinking more about things besides work. Cause I was an A plus personality um, and, uh, my career was everything and, um, I was missing out on a lot, but did not know that. And the disease, and you know, I always say that an MPN is both a curse and a blessing. Um, the blessing part is that it reminds you that how short life can be. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't live for 30 or 40 years with the disease, which is a huge advancement compared to 20 or 30 years ago. But at the same time, it's a wake up call for you to adjust your life. And you should take it, it, advantage of that because um, you can get too focused on all the things going on inside your body and the doctor. I mean, the doctor appointments, I would say, in my mind, are the most draining all the time of having to um, uh, see the doctors. I, I have had some issues that I've dealt with my therapists on about feeling guilty, like, why me? Like, why, out of all these other people, am I still uh, walking upright? And, and uh, um, you know, but I, I think some of those things are normal day-to-day -day stuff that sometimes creeps into the crazy mind. 
I, I, I do sometimes, I don't know that it's that productive. I think that, um, you know, one of the things Dr. Schreier had me do was set up goals and write them down. And so when I was first diagnosed, my first goal was to see my, my um, three kids because I was going through a divorce at the same time I was diagnosed and I won custody. And so um, my kids were uh, five, three and one and a half. And so my first goal was to see them graduate high school. And then as we passed these goals, Dr. Schreier would have me reset them. And then we kept developing them. And so um, my, my goal of today is to make it to 70. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, but my number one goal is to have the best quality of life that I can have for whatever time remaining that I have. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's not going to go away, but all you can do is give yourself the best opportunities, um, uh, stay educated have good doctors, which is which is very critical because they have the top doctors have access to, you know, some of the drug development that's going on. And, you know, as an NPM patient, it's hard not to be positive um, these days versus 20 years ago, uh, because there's so many new drugs being developed. And there's it's it, it's I don't know other than a stem cell transplant, which sometimes work, sometimes don't work, um, whether there'll be a cure, but I think there'll be drugs that will allow us to live even with myelofibrosis at some point over the next five to 10 years that will allow us to live like you have PV or something for a 30 or 40 year lifespan. And so, you know, I believe interferon is an important um, drug that can allow you to at least slow the progression of the disease down and anything you can do that means more you know along those lines means there's more time for you in your life hopefully and so um none of us know what's going to happen in the future and um you know that's a hard challenge you bring up a really good question because it's it's um you know, you, you can get sucked into the negativity of all of it. And it is exhausting, you know. I, I take more pills than I ever thought I would. And then there's the fact that I'm much older now than I was when I was first diagnosed. And so there's the normal bumps in the body that you get from just being older and the aches and the pains that you would have whether you had this disease or not. And so um, all of those things compiled uh, together, um, you know, you have to get a reflection and 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 just kind of take it with a grain of salt and, and you know, whatever happens, happens. I never th thought I would be alive to see um, five grandchildren born into this world. And um, so I'm very blessed by that. And, you know, COVID scared the crap out of me. And um, I've made it through that knock on wood, thanks to Eva Schild. And uh, um, so, you know, it's it's life's a crapshoot no matter what, whether you have a disease or you don't. And anything can happen at any time. So I think, you know, it is important to, to have a positive attitude going into this because the more negative you are, um, I, I definitely believe that, you know, there is some karma out there that can make things worse if you you know go go all uh dark one of the things that i learned about my uh, diagnosis is it's very difficult for anyone who doesn't have a cancer um to understand how you truly feel um and i think that um it's as soon as you talk to another MPN patient, there's a bond that happens and an understanding that you don't get from your friends or your family as hard as they try. And so I, I think it's important for all of us to keep talking and learning and sharing what we know 
um, uh, between each other because I think it builds strength um, and knowledge. And, um, you know, it is a, is, is rare a disease as an MPN is, it's a very tight community. And I think that's related to the social media connections and the ability to um, converse with each other. Because as you start to talk to people, they do feel lonely at times. And, um, you know, it, it, it brings people together. And, um, you know, it's, it's a real um, learning experience for everybody, no matter how knowledgeable or what level you're at. Because, you know, there's always the big difference between the person who I just got diagnosed and someone who's been on you know, a 10 year plus um, journey. That's what you've been helping facilitate for others. You've been part of the MPN forum, which has more than 10,000 followers. You started about a year ago after thinking about it for a long time, MPN forum live as a podcast. What does it give you? I, I love telling stories. So I feel like it's a digital book that I'm writing and helping guide people to um, express themselves more openly about where they're going. And so for me, it feels good because everybody's nervous. Um, this is not, I would say because of the average age of MPM patients, many of them are not really, like when you ask them, you know, hey, what, you know, we use Zoom, they're like, what's that? Um, some are, some only have, you know, 25 megabyte, um, internet broadband. So they're not as technology, uh, savvy as, um, some other groups, but, um, it's, it's, you know, I've enjoyed the conversation and, um, getting to know the patients, uh, other patients more in depth than I would otherwise. And it, it, um, if I can help them in any way, um, understand things, find different doctors, um, um, then it's rewarding to me because I, I feel like we have an obligation as educated patients to pass on things that we've learned to, um, other patients to help them uh, find the answers the, to their questions. Right. I I just uh, love your wisdom, Jeremy. Thank you. It's been a been a real pleasure. I appreciate you bringing me on.